Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, I hope you are all ready after the big keynote. It's a, it's a bit long one, but I will make it short and interesting so you don't have to feel bored after this session. So this is me. I just flew in from Singapore a few days ago, and I'm currently a senior relationship engineer for developer at Google Cloud. And uh, for my day-to-day -day jobs, I kind of help to improve the experience of developer for the platform. And I'm also fascinated about you know, whether we are in a simulated war or whether the aliens build the pyramids or not. So if you have similar thoughts, we can have a discussion after this talk. So when I just joined Google, that was about two years ago, uh, they threw me into this project called Fraud Finder. And I have no idea, right, because new company, new to the teams, so I just have to figure out how I can navigate around. And the cost, like, the, the events, it happens like that. When the user purchase something, like you, you probably buy it at their company or somewhere else, where you tap your card or your phones or your IC card to purchase something, you actually trigger an event, right? So you don't see it, but at the back end, it triggers an event, and it looks like this, right? You have a transition ID, something gibberish that you can't really tell, and uh, you have uh, timestamps that are attached to it, like when you purchase it. Don't, don't talk so much about the time zone at the moment, but it's just timestamp. And we have a customer ID, right, because your card, so you kind of know who you are. And then the transition ID, basically where the terminals, right? So in a company, you probably have like two or three or terminal. Which terminal is the tech, uh, the card tap on? And you also have the amount, right? So although we're just tapping one tap, it probably take maybe two seconds. But at the back end, there's a lot more data being generated. And then it's pushed to the server, right? So you, you have these kind of records every single tap the customer make a purchase, basically. So creating machine learning, the goal is that you have like a data that has so many attributes, customer you know, ID, terminal ID, the amount, the times, and all that. And how you want to make sense is to put that into a model, and then hopefully the model can sort of tell you whether the transition is actually a fraud or the uh, actual, actual transition from the customer. It's important because who like your money being taken away for nothing? Anyone? N nobody, right? So, so exactly. So this is how the banks try to protect you from having fraud, right? So there are even, you know, so, so there's a fraud detection system from the bank. There's a fraud detection system from the company, like the store that you purchase, there are fraud detection systems. So it's like fraud detection inception, basically. They keep detecting every step you do. Okay, so. Thing is, this is how the typical machine learning flow looks like, right? So you have a data, and of course you have to collect the data before you do any machine learning stuff. And you have to create a features which we call the input for the model, right? Before you do anything, you have to create input. If not, the model can't do anything. So you create feature engineers, and then you start building the model. And then after you have the model, of course you have to serve it, right? So either you integrate into the model or the workflow, or you have to serve it at the endpoint as the API. For this talk, I'm gonna just focus on the feature engineering part. I think this is where exciting things going on. Uh, anyone is a data engineer at the moment? A few folks. And it's, it's a challenging job, actually. Although you know, you're just kind of like moving data around, but it's kind of challenging. I, I tell you why it's challenging, because this is kind of like my first time working with streaming data, and it was really painful because I, I spent like two weeks trying to figure out how to even you know, chunk ch the data into pieces. So before everything else, right, we used to live in a world where um, MySQL, MySQL was a thing, like you can kind of like store your, your data into a laptop and then you host it, right? There's nothing about cloud, there's nothing uploading anywhere, just hosting a local server, everything was peaceful, good time, right? And your, probably the whole shop can fit into like one database, right? Then now we are living the big data world, right? Like it's not just about the whole data, right? You can't even fit in like one day data in the database anymore. You have to have like elasticity, you have to have like scalability, replications, backups, so many things going on, right? Even caching, right? So think of like big data as really, really big data. Like you have massive data coming in from day to day, right? Not even like the whole period, just one day, you have like so many data coming in. It could be terabyte to pendabyte, right? And sometimes the data are not like, 
stationary, right? You don't get data like every end of the day. You get as and when the customer do something, right? So this is where things get trickier because you don't know when the data are coming in. So you have to kind of prepare for it, right? And you don't even know when the data is going to end, right? Like, let's say you buy something at 7 Eleven, then you buy one more time because you forgot to add it in or something, right? Like, you, you can't predict this kind of events from happening. So this is where data get complicated. Because some data, maybe due to like network connection, maybe you know, something happened, it arrived late. I purchased at 8 o'clock, data transferred to the company at like 7. Right? So there could be so many things going on. And uh, you don't even know sometimes whether there's a late data coming in or not. Because you can't see the future. Right? Anyone can see the future, by the way? Oh, there's someone. All right, uh, please talk, talk to me after that. I want to know about my issue. Yeah, so, so th this is why you know, we need to be reactive and preventive of this kind of data, because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. I mean, except the gentleman over there. Uh, so the requirement given to me, it was simple enough, right? Like, you are new to the team. We have this streaming data pipeline going on. So why we need to calculate is the number of transition within 15, 30, and 60 minutes. Right? And the amount and average. Very simple, right? So let's start from this table, average, means, and max. Done. Right? That's not how it works, I think. Uh, so some challenges, because there's no proper beginning or ending. So I don't even know. I keep asking them, like, what's the start date? It's like, oh, there's no start date because it's been running for days. Uh, so you have to decide where, you're, where you start. And like, I don't know when it's going to end. Right? So if I do select star, like now, and like one minute from later, the, the, the results are different, right? So when I'm showing, when I'm doing it, different results. When I'm showing to someone, different results. So it's always changing, so you can't do that. And some records can be late. Also, amount that you receive, maybe you know, everyone wake up, start buying Shopee or Lazada or something. I don't know. So the amount of data is coming in is kind of hard to predict. I don't know how much is coming in. And I need to data, like process the data on the fly, right? Because I can't say, oh, I'll wait for like one hour, I will give you the data. It's, it's, not, it's not how streaming works. Streaming, you need to be on the fly itself. And accuracy is important, right? So you probably see some memes about, oh, I, I, I'm, I can do math really quickly. Then you ask, then you see some number and say, oh, you can do it fast, but yeah, it's not accurate. I can do it fast, but not, not accurate. So it doesn't really work that way. So, how I discovered this is called Apache Bean. It's an open source unifying programming model for batch and streaming. Right, so it's just you use one disk package, and it kind of works for both streaming and batch. So batch is like stale data. So you have like, you know, a set of data, and then you use this same pipeline, just change the type of like parameters, and then it works for both streaming and batch. And you can even combine the two together. So this is how I started learning Apache Bean. And it works for large scale processing. So it's not just you know, work for your company, work for your laptop. It works across, right? You can use it on a uh, cloud. You can use it for the multi-processing as well. So I started tinkering around, and I found out it's very easy to use, right? So this is one sample code of this. All you have to do is just import bin, and then you create a pipeline. From the pipeline, right, you can just say, like, there's uh, some data coming in. So there's, like, you know, there's an index key, which is the, in this case, is the emoji. And then I just have to group by the key, join the words using the, the lambda functions, and then I print the results. So it's very Pythonic in a way, and it's also, except the pipe, you know, you don't really see pipe in Python most of the time, but this is Pythonic in a way, and also you can use SQL-like syntax, like group by key, right, select star from here and all that. And I also figure out you can actually use SQL syntax itself inside to create some kind of uh, transformative, right? So Think of it like a custom Python function that you write that will scale at the back end for you, basically. So once I found out these tools, and they have a few tools that you can work with the streaming data, right? So it's not decided by me, it's decided by the creator. So how they do is they process the data by time, okay? So you can't really know when it's gonna end, but you just block it off by time, let's say per hour. Right? I just give you a like, sliding window kind of thing per hour. So I break it down by hours. And then there are three dominance methods you can use to 
kind of like process your data. Right? One is called fixed window, like we, we just mentioned. So I break it down by 10 minutes. So I will only process the data within the 10 minutes, right? So regardless whether you come late, you come early, I don't care. I just chop it off. That's my fixed amount of data. I just process it and then I put it up, right? Average, uh, you know, means or that within the time block itself. But sometimes it's not uh, useful because I might want to see the average uh, maybe within an hour. You can't do that because it just by time block. It's just moving all the time, right? So I don't want the moving one. I want kind of like overlap, right? So you can also have this thing called sliding window. So this is where you start to see things like, hey, what's the customer purchase you know, amount over the last 15 minutes? Because it's always sliding. So you can kind of see you know, the, the, the progress for the customer. And you can use this to do like moving average, right? So you probably heard of moving average all the time as well. But it's still within the time block, just that there's some overlap element to it, right? So when you're doing this kind of thing, you have to know that this is overlapped. And another one is more usable for like user activities, is go by the section. So you can define what type of session. It could be I logged in, and until I logged out, that's one session. So you can do things like calculate the number of activities the user did for that one particular session, and then when they log back in, then it's a new session, right? So you compress by the sessions. And you can define it, you can write your own custom session function so that you, de you decide what the session looks like. So I, I tried all these three, and the one that works for me is the sliding window using the offset. Right? So I do not know when the data has started, but if you use Apache Bean, you don't have to know because the Bean would figure out what was the latest or the earliest data available. Then they started framing the time blocks from there. So based on the timestamp that you have on the data itself, it smartly know when to go and then break it down until it is uh, reached to where you are right now. So every time the new data come in, because I need it like real time, so I do it one minute time blocks. So I'm just moving my you know, detection every one minute and then I process it on the fly. Okay, so this is how it looks like on the paper. And uh, some challenges that I still have is it solves the no beginnings or end problem because the bean kind of like take care of that. Even if the records are arriving late, I do by time block, so I don't really care that much of that. And I still need to solve this problem of unpredictable data, and I need to process on the fly. I can't be opening at night to process it on my laptop, right? And uh, this is where I started using Dataflow. So Dataflow is managed Apache Bean, right? So it's the same code, same library, just that it's managed. All you have to do is just upload it, change the runner type, and then you upload to the cloud, and then the, the thing is all uh, handled by Dataflow itself. Right, you don't have to change any code at all. Right? So usually deployment takes a lot of time and effort to like, package it and all that. This one just changed the runner type, and it just runs on itself. Right? And the open source community-driven approach to this is that when you have new products coming in from Bean, it's going to reflect it directly to Dataflow as well, because they are kind of like work together. I think Dataflow came first and then Bing comes, I think, because they open source that part of it to that. So I'm going to show you some of the demo. I think I still have a lot of time to do that. So this is how uh, Bing's code looks like, right? So let me just zoom in a little bit to see the better. All right, so first thing I just install, right? Apache Bean with the GCP and Pandas. So I install already. Then I just have to import some of the parameters that I have. I'm importing beans and then uh, pipeline options. And of course, I need to count number of transaction. That's why I have these count combined functions. And also, I calculate the means, the average of it, so the means combined functions. So all these like SQL-like transitions are actually uh, encoded into the function. So you don't have to write things yourself. Right. All you have to do is to define the boundary. Where do I chop off the data? And then where do I end the data? Right. So I'm doing this minute windows, second windows. They take it by the seconds. So you have to time 60 for the minutes, and then you know, 60 times 60 for the hour. Here I'm defining like auxiliary classes. So you do have to define like Python classes for beans to kind of know what to do with the data. Because all the data are coming in like byte stream. So you kind of have to convert it, and then say you want a timestamp into Unix. Then you have to convert the function yourself. Right? They have baking function. 
but I rather take it into my own hands so that I, I don't screw up the time zone and all. So I do that. So I convert the Unix time. Uh, this is pretty much the function to print the element info. So by default, they print like the bytes, right? So you, meet, you want to do like a print functions. And I'm also doing things like composite key so that I know which data set is belong to uh, which window because I'm doing a sliding window. So I have a duplication of data. There's some overlap of it. So I'm doing that. So you can see it's pretty much very similar to uh, JSON uh, creation. So I'm going to just reformatting all these things. And uh, this is the sample data that I have. Right? So this is to show you how it works. So this is a dummy data. So dummy data itself has like transition, transition timestamps, customer ID, terminal ID, and the amount. Right? The same thing that we did on the uh, PowerPoint slide. So all I have to do is to define the pi pipeline options. I'm going to do this batch, uh, also the local. Right, so I'm not going to touch anything on the cloud. Right? I'm just going to do it on my laptop. So I just have to define my runner is the right runner, which will run directly on my laptop. Right? And then I have to say, OK, I'm going to save the main session because they're going to do this uh, parallel processing. And I do type check for all. Right? So you can also type check none. If, you're, if you're, you li like to live life dangerously, you can put none. And then no one checks the type. So, the thing is just to create a pipeline, you just have to say pipeline, and then I create a dummy data by using bin.create. And then this is pardo. Pardo is like do function, basically, like partition and do. So you just do what you want to do. It's a custom uh, Python function that you want to do, right? So just pass in. So in this case, I'm just printing out the data, right? So just now I defined my data into an array, a list, and then I just pass the data here. Then I print them out from the bean pipeline. And it's print out exactly what I want to print out. Right? So after I have the data inside the bean already, I can manipulate it in the way that I want. Right? So this is where I start to do it. So one good thing about bean is that you can break the pipeline into segment, and then you can reuse those pipelines. Right? So you can create like a branch. Right? So one streaming data, and then you branch it out, or multiple sources coming into one. So you can combine this like that, right? So I created a source, which is just to create a dummy. And then from the source itself, I attach the timestamp. I create the time window. At the window info, I convert them to name tuple. So name tuple is like a better version of a dictionary. And then uh, just bring them out. So once you, once you have this, I have like this row is actually a name tuple uh, things that Bing, Bing did. So what I can do now is I can actually reference it by doing like uh, item dot you know timestamp item dot time ID things like that. Right, so this is how it looks like for the row. So once I get all the rows, as you can see, because I'm doing sliding window, there's a lot of overlaps here and there. It's kind of messy to look at, but if you're working with maybe like four rows, that's okay. If you're working with like one terabyte, uh, you cannot sleep for the night. There's, uh, yeah, that's how, how kind of like gets you from the data side of things. Even like there's like five lines, there's a lot of data going out. So what I need to do now is to enrich my data source. So I already have all this name type of conversion. Then I need to aggregate, right? So you have all the data that is laying out. All you need to do is press them in to get the count, to average, and other things, right? So this is where I do it. I group by customer ID, composite key, just by using bing.groupby then you define a composite key, right? And from here, how I do is remember I have to take 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes window, right? So instead of me taking 15, taking uh, 30, and then taking 60, what I do is I take one shot of 60 minutes that I, I just chalk off, right? So instead of doing three reads, just do one read, and then I chalk them off. So it's kind of saved me in, in terms of I.O. and the process. So that's how I, I kind of did. Right? So for the 60 minutes, I just you know, take everything in because my time block is 60. But for 30 minutes, I'm actually chopping off. So I, I remove the timestamps based on the, the period. And then if anything more than that, I chopped off. I don't take it. Right? So this is where I get the 30 minutes thing. So this is how it looks like. Let me just explain one of the. The, the record. So now we have the, compi, uh, the, the combined key with the composite key. And then we have a uh, number of 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes. Also average and also sum. 
right? So it is kind of hard to look at the results, but uh, if you're working on it, you, you will really know it because uh, you, you will dream about it at night. <laughs> so so that's, that's pretty much uh, how I did. And once I have one features, it doesn't end there because I have three other features to create. So I have to start creating more features, right? So this is for Sisti, and then this is another one to figure out the duplicate results, right? Uh, anything that is not into the format, I cannot do that. So I filter only, and then I re record them out. And I also need to remove empty rows. So sometimes the customer doesn't do anything, maybe for, I did once for 60 minutes, and then I don't do anything for 15 minutes and 30 minutes because you know, I, I only do it at the last minute. So you have one record for 60, but zero records for the rest. So you kind of have to remove those rows as well. And then I have to reformat it so that people can see, right? Because I can't just put this kind of data into the database. The administrator will kill me. So I have to kind of like make it nice, put it into dictionary. So dictionary is like that, right? With the proper format of the uh, decimal. So you have transition ID, timestamp, customer ID, terminal ID, amount, which are all uh, type stream now. And the rest like, uh, one and uh, 10.0. So if there's anything that is count, it's integer. If there's anything that's average and the sum is uh, decimal, right? So I kind of do that as well. And then once I have it, this, this is the end results, right? So we, we have like five records, now I have five records because I compress them by using combined functions. So during the process, there's a lot of readings. Yeah, and uh, cannot sleep at night. But uh, after this was done, you're like, okay, I feel relieved because now I get some results, right? So it's, you can easily compare it. And the good thing is, when this is done, like usually if you write code, your dummy tall example is done, you still need to kind of like make it into proper format, right? Syntax, type hint and all that. For this case, right, all I need to do, it was just to um, change this. So this is actually reading it directly from the streaming. So the data is actually streaming from the uh, data store like pops up, right? So we call it the uh, data streaming pipeline where I just try to read it from there. So this is exactly what I get it from the data, but this accurate data that coming in from the, the terminal, right? So the, the transition IDs and the timestamps, the customer IDs are no longer like one or zero and all this anymore, but it's, it's the real data that coming in. So all I need to do was instead of uh, putting in streaming false, I just say streaming true without changing any code, then it will just start using that streaming uh, functions to, to process it one by one. All right, so I can't run this here because it's, it will just keep running on my laptop and then I stopped it. But what I do is I want to run it on the data flow, which is on the server itself. And what I have to do is put all this thing into main.py in a way that package it. Then I have to just change one thing. So all the functions are actually the same as we did initially. What I need to do is to change the runner into data flow. The rest is just the same, right? Of course, this project ID is from like, you know, uh, Google Cloud requirements and stuff. And then I can define number of workers I need. So if you set it to two, it's parallel processing. If you set it to 10, there's a lot more things. Because if you set more, it's more expensive. So you have to kind of like, you know, cater to what you want to do. All these pipelines are the same. I have the source, enriched resources, aggregating into rows and differentiating all the, the Sums count 30 minutes, 50 minutes, and uh, 60 minutes. The same thing for the results. I need to clean them up, and then I print them up. Right? So I just put this into a Python file, which was saved into here, like main.py. So exactly whatever I just wrote there, it will, read, it will write here, and then make it into a file. Then I have a requirement or Apache bin, which I just install it. All these packages, actually, by doing this, let me see. So by running the Python domain, it will actually trigger, it knows exactly what you should do. What, what you, when you run this thing, it will look at main, and it will upload this requirement directly to the cloud. So it should be running here. It will create a job here. Let me just do this. So you don't have to even like upload the file directly. You just run it from your Jupyter notebook, and it knows exactly where to upload it. So it will upload, and then it will start running this. And if you click into it, you will see all the steps that you wrote down here. Right? So the first thing is read from pops up. You decode the byte into JSON array, attaching the timeline, 
sliding windows, adding window info, converting the name tuple. And here, I filter only some elements and then group by some of the keys, right? And also, I need to assign the key back and then merge the collection back. So you can see all your code visualized into simple steps. So if something went wrong, right, there will be like something wrong with this. There will be an uh, error alert. So you know where to look at and which part is wrong. So at least this is uh, pleasing to me than uh, all the numbers and the, the code. So I, I like to do that. And I'm just kind of like printing all. So anything that you want to see, you can also see from the uh, log as well. So now it's not printing any log, I think. Let me see, data sampling, no. Yeah, so uh, that's pretty much about my talk. Try to, so if you, if you notice the, the, the name, the title is beaming up into the flow. So you are just using bean and then you upping to the flow without uploading any source code at all. So we just run this main that you created and then it knows exactly what to do. And we just create a job on the cloud console itself. Right, uh, so if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Let me just go back to my presentation. Yeah. Hello, uh, yeah. thank you. Thank you for the talk. So I have like a couple of questions. Okay. The first one was you mentioned in the challenges. Yeah. The uh, the accuracy was important, but yeah. you didn't talk about it. So yeah. So how I did accuracy was important is uh, remember there was a there was a final one. This. So now, currently I'm just printing it, mm -hmm. but there should be a step to check for whatever you are doing, right? So. How I compare this is with the stale data. So this is a streaming data, and it's coming in, that I can compare it the next day, because I already have all the data for the data I want. So I will have a BigQuery database that is actually sitting in. So I average that database from that time. I will compare with the time from here. So if I'm doing a good job, I should match with the select statement from the SQL. So that's how kind of accurate yeah, ah, you okay. can do. Yeah, you can actually input that steps inside by using a functions. Right, because I haven't set up the BigQuery database to store this thing. So, but it's, it's additional cost, right? Everything you do kind of add up to it, but you can do that kind of thing as well. And what, what happens if there, there was some mismatch? In that case, what mm. would you have done? So if there's mismatch in that case, I have to investigate, right? So there's no uh, easy way around it. So one thing, what, I, what we do uh, in machine learning is we, we, what we call a data drift measurement. Mm. So we want to measure whether the data that's coming in. So first thing first, we do, uh, we detect the, what's normal for this data, right? So for example, if a customer, they are purchasing maybe three items a day, and suddenly that customer purchased 100 items, that's not normal, right? So you should have alert before it happens, yeah, something like that. Oh, okay. uh, you, so you kind of see what normal for the data, and you have like a dashboard that's measuring. So I think you can also see, I'm not sure, uh, because I, this is just like, so you can see from here like how the data is coming in, what's the freshness, and uh, how, how long do you take to, to process all the steps and all. And also there's some job metrics that you can define. So number of workers, some of the metrics, uh, data freshness. So these are some of the indicators for you to kind of see what's going on in the pipeline. And uh, if, like for example, Sometimes you don't know the ground truth because even the company itself do not know what's the ground truth. This is where you start talking to, let's say, a consultant from that particular domain and say, oh, what's normal for you guys? And then we kind of adjust our ground truth if you're normal. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. No, thank you. Hello. Oh. Hello. So thank you for your talk. Um, I know that uh, Apache Ping was actually based on paper couple of paper from Google, uh, fluent Java and something else. Yeah. So I wonder like uh, what's the current uh, Python support for it and overall like uh, uh, now it's owned by Apache. So what's the current act, um, act, how active the repository is being maintained by whom and uh, what's the status? Yeah. Uh, so, so for the Apache Bean library, is, is quite not active, so they are so currently what whatever you did is the feature engineering, right? So there's no machine learning elements involved, although it was a machine learning project, right? So recently, uh, there was the shift from the community to have 
machine learning capability inside the pipeline. So they were like, we don't just want to do data engineering within the, the bin ecosystem. We also want to have like machine learning capabilities. So I think about a few months ago, they integrated like GPU attachment to the pipeline. So you can actually create inference pipeline, training pipeline using the bin. And one of our advocate, he's not from my team anymore, but he's like the, um, he's taking care of this bin, so actively. So it's like, it's like a, his full-time job to take care of it. And I also know some of the people within Google who take on Apache bin community building as their job. And uh, they organize virtual meetup every now and then. You can follow them on Twitter. So I know some of them personally. I also gave a talk about this maybe one year ago. So the community is quite active, uh, but from Google involvement, they are involving more, more around thought leadership and the community building. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Answer, yeah. Thank you. Any more? Any other questions? Okay. Uh, this is the last question, please. Okay, yeah. Uh, hi, uh, uh, the tool looks uh, great. I, I, I heard about BIM, but never really used it. Uh, I have a question really regarding to, seems like uh, the pipeline stage is somehow quite resource heavy, if you think about it. It's, imagine your upstream is some sort of message queue where mm -hmm. you're, we're talking about consolidating all the data, and if you apply some moving average on that, uh, do you find difficulty on uh, scaling at pipeline part, or it's supported uh, already with some horizontal so uh, scaling? Map. I think there are a few ways to create that kind of like aggregation pipeline. So the one that I use is like the mean combine functions or count combine functions. Those are actually type safe or parallel ready kind of functions because it's built in, right? And if you're writing, so things that you do sometimes if you want to customize, you do par do. Right, so Pardu takes in any of the functions and then try to scale it up. And the way you write your code, it should be scalable, like uh, it should be like uh, you know something that can parallel process. Right, it shouldn't be you have the output coming in from the first function and then you're waiting for it to happen in the next function. So you you have to break it down your code in a way that is uh, idle potent, can be rerun if you need it, and also um, when you process it. Don't try to take in so many things at one go. Make it, like, break it into, like, for example, I'm doing every one minute. Don't wait, let's say, don't use bin for something like, oh, I want to ag aggregate one day data, right? Uh, you can use some other tools for that, but if you want to make it fast, make it, you know, uh, in independent from other tracks. So, and when you, when you create it, let's say you can increase a max worker, that would actually, they just take in the jobs and then try to scale it up. Yeah, I hope that answer. Yeah. Any okay? No more questions, right? So if you want to try, uh, this is one of the kind of a free gift from me. Just scan it. You get like one dollar kind of credits to enable Google Cloud. And okay, one dollar is because you get all these things activated for you for free, right? So even though that's just one dollar. Everything you are using from here is kind of free. Okay, so, and uh, yeah, this is actually our booth. So if you have questions, find me at the booth. Uh, this is some of the things. If you, if you sign up, you get some free gift from the booth as well, right? And uh, yeah, this is how you contact me if you have any questions, even after the, the talks. So with that, uh, thank you so much for your time, and I hope you have a good day and a good session. Thank you for your presentation. And uh, uh, audience uh, want to want to see the QR code uh, before QR code. Before. Uh, the last one, uh, try GCP. Ah. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you want to try the data flow or something, uh, yeah. please, please scan this QR code. And uh, thank you very much for your talk. Thank you, thank you. Please give a big round of applause to the speaker.